Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Lathe Skills, a series of quick videos on getting started in machining. This is episode 10, Drilling. If you like my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. There's a link in the description. I post exclusive project videos and engineering drawings, 3D models of my projects, uh, lens videos, uh, behind the scenes stuff, lots of cool stuff just for patrons. Okay, let's dive in. There are two basic ways to make a precision hole. The first is with a boring operation, which is a lot more fun than it sounds, but we're gonna start with the much more common drilling operation. We're gonna show you how to drill the machinist way, which is a four-step operation. All four steps of this operation are gonna be done with a Jacob's chuck in the tailstock. You might recognize this as being the same type of thing that's in your drill press uh, or in a smaller version on your hand drill. Uh, and these guys go into the tailstock using typically a Morse taper. This is a Morse taper two. And uh, there's also a smaller taper in here holding it onto the chucks. So you can actually interchange all of these parts. Uh, this is a, a Jacobs taper 33, which is pretty typical. So uh, this guy goes into your tailstock just like any other tailstock tooling. And now we can get started. As I said earlier, drilling a hole the machinist way is a four step process. So we're gonna start by center drilling then we're gonna pilot drill, and then we're going to drill undersize, and then we're gonna ream to final size. Okay, we're set up for center drilling, and the purpose of center drilling is to get our hole started precisely on the axis of the lathe. A center drill, unlike a regular drill, uh, is very, very rigid, it's short, and it cuts right on the point, which regular drills do not. And this allows us to get this hole started right on the center axis so that all of our subsequent tools will be naturally guided to where we want them to go. And we're gonna set our spindle speed quite high because as I talked about in the facing video, at the center here, our surface speed is gonna be very low and we need the proper feet per minute for uh, the cutting edges on our center drill. So something like 1000 RPM uh, is a good start. Now you always wanna use some cutting oil on a center drill. And it's a good idea to just kinda touch it when you first get started, just kinda poke the material a little bit lightly, kinda let the center drill find its center, and then you can start easing it in. As we talked about in the tail support video, you wanna go uh, to about two thirds of the way up the angled portion of the center drill. Uh, if you don't go deep enough, then you won't get a nice beveled starting hole for your next tool. And if you go too deep, you'll get chatter and uh, potentially break off the center drill. Now we're ready to pilot drill using this smaller drill here. Uh, as an aside, uh, these are properly called drills, not drill bits. If you get that wrong, you will get mocked in machinist forums. The purpose of pilot drilling is twofold. Uh, the first is to help ensure that our larger drill bit goes straight. Uh, the more work that a drill is doing, the more likely it is to wander off the axis of the lathe as it goes. Uh, drills are not generally very rigid. They are a low precision, high efficiency way to remove material. So they do things fast, but not especially precisely. So the pilot drill helps the, the larger drill stay on course. And the other thing it's doing is making clearance for the chisel tip on the end of the larger drill here. All drills have this chisel tip, and if it's too large, then you really can't do any cutting on this end. And uh, so we need to make clearance for that. First thing that'll catch your attention when using a drill on the lathe for the first time is that it's kind of funny that the material is spinning and that the drill isn't. You know, if you're used to using traditional drilling machines, uh, they always spin the drill and not the material. So uh, it's, it's a neat experience. Uh, and of course, you know, when you think about it, it makes sense. All that really matters is the relative speed of the cutting surface and the stock, but it's still a neat thing. The main thing you wanna be thinking about during the drilling operation is clearing your chips. The spiral flutes on a drill bit are not for cutting. These are actually for clearing chips as the drill goes into the hole. And uh, these have an efficiency limit on them that you can hit if the depth of your hole gets too much greater than the diameter of the drill. So if you're drilling a small hole very deep, uh, then you need to clear chips more often than a larger hole that's shallower. And uh, you can very much get the feel of that. As you're pushing the drill in with the tailstock ram, you will feel the drill start to slow down or uh, it'll start to labor. Uh, an easy way to clear your chips is to unlock the tailstock, slide the whole tailstock out, and then push it back in. And uh, that will allow you to kind of save your setting on the tailstock ram. And for spindle speed, I've gone a little bit lower than I was for the center drill because of course, uh, this small drill bit, while small, is larger than the center drill was. So my surface speed in the area that it's cutting, is gonna be a little higher. So uh, I might go to uh, 800 or 700 RPM, something like that. All right, and cutting fluid as always for drilling operations. My tailstock is locked. 
And I'm going to start easing the ram in. And when a drill is cutting properly, you'll see chips curling off of two places because there are two cutting edges. So you can see the flutes doing their job, clearing the chips there. And the deeper you get, the more often it's going to labor. So if you're drilling a very small hole, very deep, uh, you'll start to have to clear those chips very frequently, like sometimes even every hundredth hour or so. And then it's a good idea to periodically freshen up your cutting oil. Now when drilling a blind hole, of course, you need to be thinking about your depth. And there's two ways to measure depth on your tailstock for drilling. You've got the indications on the ram here, and you've also got hand wheel marks back here. Now this is sort of a, a coarser scale, and then this back here is going to be a, a very precise scale. In my case, it's marked in thousands. Drills are never going to be a, an extremely precise way to make a hole, but uh, if you need uh, to hit a depth, plus or minus 5,000, something like that, you can definitely do it uh, with these markings here and here. So I've got my larger drill chucked up now, and uh, it's really just a preparation step. You want to choose a, a drill, a final drill size that's uh, a bit smaller than the reamer that you need to be using. Uh, you might go a 64th under that in imperial measurements, or in metric you might go, say, 0.5 millimeters under your final reamer size. Okay, now with the larger drill, and I've slowed the lathe down again, this time where it may be 400 uh, RPM. And there's our final depth right there, so to loosen the tailstock and slide that guy out. All right, all those previous steps were just to get the stage set for the star of the show, which is the reamer. Now, this is a straight fluted chucking reamer, which is very typical. So the uh, cutting flutes here are straight, hence the name. And it's round on the back. It's designed to be chucked into Jacob's chucks or other or, or, or collets or other types of uh, chucking devices. Now, uh, because reamers don't have a cutting point on the end, uh, we of course had to open up the hole for them. You want the reamer to remove as little material as it needs to because this is a precision dimensioning instrument, not a uh, not a, a hogging out or a, a, a bulk material removal instrument. So uh, these are very precisely made. They are precision ground, they are rigid, and uh, you know these are high quality instruments that you need to be careful with. Now the, the number one rule uh, with a reamer is never ever run them backwards. So don't ever run your chuck backwards with it engaged with the material. If you need to remove one by hand, don't try to unscrew it. Uh, never run these guys backwards because you will uh, instantly ruin the cutting edges on them if you do that. Okay, our reamer is chucked up and ready to go. Now with reamers, you want to use lots of cutting fluid. You want to run a slow spindle speed, uh, much slower than you would for drilling. And you want to clear chips frequently because these guys don't have the spiral flutes that a drill has, they can't clear their own chips. So uh, be very patient with these guys. Okay, I've eased my reamer into the material. I'm just winding it in nice and gentle, not in a hurry. And occasionally I'll crank it back out, clear those chips, and ease it back in. Never be in a hurry with a reamer. Now of course I mentioned that this is a straight fluted reamer. Uh, you can also get spiral flute reamers. And the advantage of those guys is that if the inside of your hole is not a perfect circle, for example, if there's a keyway in there, then the straight flutes would get snagged and come off of the center axis as the reamer is cutting. And uh, so spiral fluted reamer will allow the reamer to cross gaps on the inside of the hole. They're more expensive uh, and they're harder to sharpen, but uh, if, you, uh, if you need them, they are nice to have. So I'm running about 280 RPM here, nice and gentle. And there's our final depth right there. So I'm going to unlock my tailstock and pull this guy right out of there. And the last step you want to do is to deburr the hole. Now, uh, any cutting tool is going to leave a burr or a little bit of a ridge uh, around where the cutting happened. And with a hole, if you're trying to, to fit it up to something, you might think the hole is too small, but it's typically just the burr in there. So before you do any measuring or fit up, you always want to deburr things. And I like to do that by hand. Uh, so I just put this guy in there and spin the check by hand a little bit and deburr that hole. And it also gives it that nice machinist look that we all love. 
and that is how you make a precision hole on the lathe. Now, because we used a 500 thou reamer, we can be confident that this hole is 500 thou. Uh, if you need it a little smaller for a press fit or a little larger for uh, a free running fit, you can get over and under size reamers. You can get them half or one thousandth over or under uh, this, the, the size that, uh, that you want. Now, that was a lot of steps, and you might be asking yourself, why would anyone go to all that trouble when I can drill a hole on the drill press or using a hand drill? Uh, well, you drill things on the lathe when uh, precision really matters. So not only the dimension of the hole, but also when you need that hole to be extremely concentric to the stock and when you need that hole to be extremely square to the face. So if there's going to be a sliding mechanism involved here, like a piston or you know a valve stem or anything like that running in this shaft, you need it to be extremely square to this face. Uh, if this is you know part of a larger mechanism, maybe it's a bushing or a bearing, uh, you need it to be very concentric to the outside surface. So uh, you know when precision matters in all dimensions, you do your drilling on the lathe. So that's drilling a hole the machinist way. In a nutshell, I hope you found this content useful. Uh, please do consider supporting me on Patreon and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.